Three. So I've got, I've got, uh, what is this? The left fork over here. And I've got the drain plug out. And there's really only two things that worry me about these forks. They're actually pretty simple. I shouldn't say they're super simple. They got a little bit of complication with this anti-dive kind of track, sport track thing. I don't know what Honda called it. I really don't even understand how it works, but we really don't have to understand how it works to fix the fork seals. I grabbed a couple extra crush washers. I'll put a new one on the drain plug. I really enjoy that these have drain plugs. Oh, the thing that I'm worried about, the circ clip inside and then the damper rod bolt in here. If you do not have one of these impact wrenches, these things can be a nightmare. And if you get them rounded, you might end up having to drill them out. And that's, that's really kind of sucks. So I don't know how this one's gonna work yet. I loosened the top of this, so I won't struggle with it, but I'm gonna drain as much of this as I can for now. And then I'm gonna loosen that damper rod bolt. I'm looking at the fork fluid. This one looks a little dirtier than the first one I did. But it almost seems like this was done not too long ago and they just put shitty fork seals in that started leaking right away and i'm somebody that knows exactly what that's like because i bought some shitty fork seals from four into one a while back when i'd been struggling with those forks and i just didn't know how long i was going to be able to even have a set of fork seals in for how many times i kept having to take them apart so i just wanted to go cheap I bought some four dollar fork seals holy shit, those things leaked immediately so yeah, kind of got what your money's worth on that. So I'm putting all balls in here. I know that's kind of a contentious thing. And some people say, fuck all balls. Those are shitty seals. I have never had to replace an all ball seal after I put it into a bike. Um, maybe I don't have enough miles. Maybe I don't have enough years on them, but I haven't. The only ones I've ever had to replace are the super cheap ones that I put in there and I had to do those immediately. So let's see if we can get past hurdle number one, which is getting that damper rod loose. In order to get that damper rod loose, gotta make sure that we have enough tension on it because there's nothing really holding that damper rod in there, which is why we need that tension. I'm also really glad, I should have done this years ago, is just buy a big old pack of drain bolts. So I got, I happen to have the exact size crush washer on here. I gotta make sure that I come and remember to, oh, actually I can tighten it right now. I just don't need this dripping all over the place. And that should be fine. Then, full speed ahead, make sure we're going left. All right. This, oh, this one doesn't look as good. Oh dear. The last one was defined. Oh shit, this isn't cool. The last one was good. I've actually got a couple spares if I can get this out. If I can get this out. Come on, baby. We got it. Woo -hoo. And now I just real soft tighten it to, oh wait, no, I drained it already. So fuck it, I can take it out. We can make a little bit of a mess. This thing, see that? That is on its way out. If you do not have an impact wrench and you go at this with one of these, you might be able to get it out. You might, but I've run into it before where you simply can't. It's too fucked. It's too rounded. And then it's toast. Luckily, I've got a spare because I will be replacing that one. I didn't replace the other one because the other one was really good. That one, that is not good. All right, dust cap. All right, so this is the second fear of mine. If this circlip design is not a good design on these. It just isn't. It's got a weak point. You'll, it'll be way more obvious when I get it out. But if these things rust, which obviously there's signs of corrosion on this one, but it not horrible. I'll show you where the weak point is. And if you break one of the things, there's no way to get this thing out without chiseling through the side of the fork lower. And then also, I cannot fit any other snap ring pliers inside of this. I had to order this Motion Pro one to go into the side this way any like Harbor Freight, well, not even Harbor Freight ones, go, go to any big box store, try to find a set of snap ring pliers that fits in this. I think there's a show of forks, fits in this show of fork from a 1984 to 1986 Honda VF500F Interceptor. Try to get it to fit into here. You're not gonna, at least I couldn't find one that did. Whew. What I just did there took me eight months before on mine. 
I'm gonna show you where the weak point is on this piece of shit. Do you see how thin it gets right there? If enough corrosion hits this, and this one's actually not that bad. I Everybody says surface rust, but this, this truly is just, actually this one isn't even as rusted as the last one. If that piece or that part right there rusts enough and this thing corrodes into the sides, when you go to grab it with the snap ring pliers, it just snaps right here. Now, I think I might actually have another spare one of these. If I do, I'm gonna replace this one. If I don't, well, hopefully I'm putting in a good enough set of fork seals that this doesn't need to be done again for a while. Now we get to get to the fun part. There is a fun part, believe it or not, about doing forks. Well, there's two fun parts. The most fun part is when you're done and then you spring around on it like it's a pogo stick and you enjoy yourself because it's always fun to do that. The other fun part, actually before I even get to that, I always, this is how I would expect the spring to be. Um, I've seen arguments about putting the tighter windings on the top versus the bottom. In my head, it makes a whole lot more sense to have the tighter wound springs near the bottom. You just have a lower center of mass from the, the sprung mass and just you have more mass towards the bottom of the bike as opposed to the top. So let's put this. Oh, no, that's exactly what I was trying not to do. God damn it. No, it's going to be even harder to do the fun part. The fun part is ripping these two parts in half, which I should be able to do and make a mess doing it. But oh, I wanted to do it in one, two, three. There it goes. All right, that was that was that was the fun part that I was talking about. Oh shit! I still got the damper on inside of it. <laughs> I, I realized why the diaphragm didn't fall out of this or diaphragm. The damper rod didn't fall out of this like I expected it to. Uh, it's because this this fork, the the left fork on this is totally different. I, I don't know how this thing works, and I should honestly spend some time figuring out how the Honda. I think it's an anti dive system on here. I don't know if it's some kind of valving, kind of like an. And I don't know if it's like an emulator kind of thing, but it it has an adjustment here. And I just do not know how it works. But essentially, if you wanted to remove the damper rod, there's two of these little spring things that need to come off. Pull those off. This will slide over that side. We can pull the damper out this side. Since I'm not doing anything with it, um, I don't need to pull it out. But it just caught me off guard. I actually think the bushings on this side are different too, because I don't think there's a double bushing on the other one i think this piece here is a single unit then you've got this then this this washer and then you've got the seal it actually looks like this over on the bike and they actually have different fork capacities so this is the right which is like a standard fork it looks like that that's kind of just what i'm used to looking at a conventional fork that looks like that one so that's what you've got on here however you've got this i believe some type of some type of adjustment which <laughs> previous owner just fucking sprayed everything uh on here I honestly should spend some time researching how this thing actually works. I've taken this one off before. I can't remember even what was behind it. Some kind of diaphragm or something. I, I don't know, but it, it's just interesting that that was holding me up on why the hell isn't this damper rod falling out? And that's why. So this is the old fork seal. So I'm going to pull the old fork seal. These things are directional. We'll put it there. I can't find another circ clip. I did find a new damper rod bolt though this one's the more important one because the circlip looks like it's actually all right now that i wiped it off and i'm gonna bring the washer off and it's really all i have to bring off of there so i have a new set of i got a new dust seal i wish the, the all ball seals looked more like the oem ones because so i might well i already put the other i already put this one on the other one so Whatever. I, I like the look of those better, but we'll go with the, the all balls. And then here's the new seal. I did find some of those old, the, not old, but the cheap piece of shit ones. They look identical. These $4 ones, these four into one, $4 ones. Absolute trash. I got four more of those. If anybody wants them, I'll throw in the fucking postage for you. So this is going to go on over the top. Um, I'm going to get that ready. To do that, I use a little bit of red, red, red rubber grease on the inside of this and on the outside of this to help me seat it. And I've learned to use red rubber grease instead of using something like uh, the Valvoline Sin Power with the, the molybdenum and all that kind of stuff because the petroleum distillates inside of this type of grease can or will react with rubber and degrade it quicker. Whereas red rubber grease or something like 
super lube, this O-ring silicon lubricant, that won't affect these things. I, I not these things. It won't affect the rubber. In fact, it'll actually help preserve it. And it just helps slide it over the top. I'm also going to be using some cellophane over the top just in case you just don't want to nick these things when it's going over the top you get it set and you should be good for a long time and that's what we're going to be trying to do the last thing i've got i mean i i have a new crush seal and one of the things the instructions always says is you know replace the uh the copper crush washer these things never fucking come out and i have been trying so i'm gonna give up because 99% certain it's going to seal just fine without pulling that out and putting a new one in. But my god, these things never come out in the same way that fucking exhaust gaskets never come out. Yeah, replace them every time you take the exhaust out. Sure, if you could ever get them out. And I never can. Maybe other people are luckier than me or they know how to do it and I don't. But, but I never do because I can never get the damn things out. You know, a while back, like two years ago, I think I made a video about fork seal replacement on a Suzuki Bandit and I did not use thread locker on the damper rod bolt when I put it back in and actually just a real quick comparison you can see this is the new one I'm putting in obviously and the old one that I just don't trust that the next time you have to break this loose I just maybe it won't have enough biting room because because it's been rounded a little bit but anyway yeah somebody uh, I got two comments about people wanting to sue me uh, for not putting thread locker on here when I put it inside of here and thread it into the damper rod and uh, because I said I was putting people in danger and you know what I say to that person uh, go fuck yourself because I am again not putting any fucking thread locker on here because you'll never get it fucking back off maybe you get lucky maybe you won't but I'm not doing it So I'm just putting that on so I can tighten this up a bit. I'll come back and tighten it down further, but I do want to get it tight enough that it probably won't leak a bunch. But you see, I didn't tighten the cap very much and I'm actually spinning, well, I'm spinning the stanchion right now. And that's why if you tighten these things too much in there, you might never get the fucking thing back out without drilling it. And you might be calling to sue people because of not using the thread locker until you gotta drill one. And then you fucking start singing a different tune pretty fucking quickly. Okay, we should be able to drive this fork seal home. So we've got the damper rod bolt in. That bushing, that bushing is there. That bushing, it looks like it's pressed up. However, once we put this washer over the top, we should be able to then drive it down. What I've been using on these 38 millimeter forks, and these are, this is awesome. If you got the 41 millimeter, which is kind of like the standard, at least what I've seen is the standard size of a more modern style sport bike with conventional forks, you're not going to be able to fit this one and a half inch PVC over the top. But I've been slamming this thing home for a decade now. I got a bunch of, uh, I softened up the end of a one and a half inch, I believe it's a one and a half inch schedule 40 PVC pipe right over the top. This actually will fit like that. So I should be able to drive that home drive that home enough so that bushing is all the way seated we've got the washer in on there and then I've lubricated up the inside and the outside of this new fork seal with some red rubber grease and what I'm gonna do is take my cellophane over the top and just do that just in case there's anything that's going to nick it up on its way down this thing's directional, do I, yeah, okay, that way. Come over. Bring her on down. Okay, now I can toss that. Should be able to seat that a little bit, and then we get to drive her home with this. And we gotta get it below the circlip level so we can get the circlip in. Probably already there. That is so much easier than using one of those dedicated fork seal drivers that I, I got one. I got a 41 millimeter one. That piece of PVC on these 38 millimeters is so much easier to do that on. 
So now it's circlip time. Come over the top like so. There we go. Leave that. And then I should be able to just push this down. Nope. We're going to push it down with one hand while I pinch on the other. There. There we go. That's it. That's that hum. And we got a dust seal for the top. Ugh. Sweet. Yes, yeah, so now I'm just I'm just filling up the fork. I've actually been looking for this for a day now, trying to figure out how much fork fluid to put in here. So, like I mentioned earlier, the forks are different. 320 for the right hand, 335 cc's for the left hand, but usually you get a height reading. And I actually bought one of those uh, little suction things to like get a exact height. Like if it's four inches, we put four inches here. So this thing's all the way depressed, no spring inside of it. And then you'd normally set the height there. Um, I've got 300 milliliters in it now. I'm gonna put the last 35 into it, but I was hoping to get like an actual height. And I was thinking it might've just been a failing of the climber manual. I'm gonna go a little bit over cause there's always residual that stays in there. I thought it was just a failing of the climber manual and I had a look at uh, my downloaded copy of the factory service manual and I couldn't find a height either. And all they do is list the volume. The height would be way easier because let's say you wanted to, let's say you wanted to change fork fluid oil because I'm using 15 weight here. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. I'm using 15 weight here. And you're like, oh shit, that's that's too heavy or that's too light. I'm gonna swap this down. I'm, it's too heavy. I'm gonna swap it down to 10 weight. All right, so pump it all out as much as you can out of the bottom without you know pulling the fork apart and cleaning everything out. And then you just reset the height. But because you're take the only way you can get the full volume in there is if you take everything apart, like I did earlier, and try to get as much of it out of there as possible, you're gonna have residual left over. And I even had a little bit of residual left over. So 335, without taking the whole thing apart, is gonna leave you over that amount. So knowing the height would be preferential, but I don't know what the height is. So I'm going by the book on this one, uh, not my bike. So somebody else can do their own trial and error on this fucker, but it would be good to know what it's supposed to be. So I'm using the 15 weight solely because that's what I have in the house. Uh, the manual calls for automatic transmission fluid or like 10 weight or something like that. Um, I have no idea. I mean, 15 weight new fork oil with new fork seals is gonna be better than blown fork seals with 10 weight. So I figure this is still a proper exercise to do this to get this thing roadworthy. So now I've got that on all the way down. I want the spring coming over. I'm gonna put the lower part down. Actually, I wanna extend the stanchion up. I'm just, just looking at it. It looked like the air gap was gonna be way too big. It's way bigger than like say four and a quarter inches, which is what I think I got the SV set to. Just, it just seems kind of strange to me, but uh, I guess that's what it is. Part of it might be because these forks actually have this pneumatic uh, inflator on the top. So you can actually adjust the PSI on the top of the air gap on, on this thing. And I think you're just supposed to go anywhere from zero to six PSI to adjust the handling characteristics. I've read in a couple places that it actually makes things worse to do that. And uh, I've just never ran any PSI on the top, but wow, I just spit. Hopefully the camera caught that. That was kind of wild. Um, but I've just never ran any, but that, that might be why there's such a big air gap. This, I usually grab the socket. It's sort of a finer thread. This one isn't as bad as some forks I've seen, but you just don't want to cross thread this thing. So this is always kind of nerve wracking. I, I did it earlier. I got lucky when I was tightening down that damper rod bolt. All right, so there we go. So I'm gonna get this pretty close. I will get this hand tight and then there's gonna be a torque value for this top bolt that we're gonna get to once it's on the bike, cause then we can torque it properly. Nice. And here is where, if you're gonna sue me, this is why you're gonna sue me. Do this at your own fucking discretion. You wanna, you wanna put thread locker on that damper rod bolt, go ahead. I encourage you to do it, you should do it. I'm using the T-handle and then basically I just go as hard as I can with the T-handle. 
that's as hard as I can go with the T-handle. It's not a whole lot of torque because you just, you can't get that much twisting action from here, but this is as hard as I can. I'll be able to break that with this. However, I do not think I will get a leak with this. So I'm going to go and clean up all of this as much as I can with the brake clean. And just, I want to get it as dry as possible. That way, if I see anything later, I'll know I have a leak. I got to come back and I got to tighten this more. Then I'll come and grab something like, like this and I'll tighten it harder. But I'm going to be honest, if this tightens with the T-handle with as much as I got on it with this new damper rod bolt and the old crush washer, I don't want to go any tighter because you never get the damn thing off. Reassembly on this thing's pretty straightforward. I just put the forks up through. This thing's always a pain in the nuts though. I can't get this thing off unless the wheel is dropped out. So I'm putting it in now so that I can get it looped the speedometer cable through it. Then I think I need on the braces, I need 33 to 40 with the 14 on those seven to nine foot pounds on the uppers, which are those, and then 11 to 22 on the caps, which I will tighten those things up with the 24 millimeter on the top once I have the other bolts tightened up and I will put the wheel back on and uh, hook the speedometer cable back up. Actually, I'm gonna lubricate that thing before I, I do it. And then, shit, fork seals are done. Let's see if I can do that. What a fucking idiot. You have to put the speedometer back in or else you won't get a speed reading. I forgot to do that so I get to redo this. Well, that's it for this video. I got everything torqued down. I actually went through the fucking manual and made sure everything on the calipers, forks, uh, and everything tightening down the forks is torqued to what it should be. Hopefully my water pump gasket or O-ring is going to hold. I'm gonna run this thing tomorrow, but just buttoning it up and that's what I got. I just, just remembered I left my V-strum out here earlier and uh, just, just to say a, oh, a final goodbye to you, Mr. CL. Mr. CL350. Had a lot of fun with that bike. Uh, mechanically, uh, got that cool scar there. and I don't know. Motorcycles are fun. I wish I was good at them. Wish I knew how to ride them well. Wish I knew how to work on them well. I don't know how to do either. I just, I got time to fucking kill and learn this shit. And the only way to learn is by doing so. I'm going to keep doing it. Don't take any advice from any of these videos. That's why I'm going to keep shooting these fucking informally. Uh, because I'm not doing how-tos anymore. It's too damn hard. It's too damn hard. There's too much research. It's too much not fun. Instead, I'm just going to do these. If you watch this far, thanks for watching.